Hi there guys, Brad here again at South End TV and we are in Cranfield's Curiosity Cabinet here in Leon C. And I'm with the owner of Cranfield's Curiosity Cabinet, Mr. James Cranfield. Welcome on board the show today. Hello, nice to have you here. So uh, James, looking around, it's a really it is curious. It says it in the title there, you're not uh, misadvertising. <laughs> Um, how exactly did you get into this, this taxidermy and, and stuffed animals and stuff like that? Well, I've uh, collected all manner of weird things all my life. And so from a young kid, I would pick up, you know, dead snail shells from the woods, fox skulls that I'd find and clean in my parents' sink. Um, and, you know, whenever I had any money, I would just buy whatever I could find from boot sales, antique fairs, off the internet, and it's somewhat got out of control. Yeah, it seems that way. I mean, whereas I used to spend my pocket money on uh, video games and uh, football yeah. magazines, you spent it on uh, dead snails and stuffed turtles and stuff like that. Yeah. So, uh, James, um, you've got this shop now. How long have you been going for here in Lee? The shop as a physical shop has been here three and a half years, uh, but, you know, I turned 30 this year and I've literally collected it all my life. So is all of this stuff up for sale here or? Well, the, the, the premises is broken into two. So everything out the front is, is the shop and everything is for sale in there. And then we're actually standing in the museum. So this is my private collection. Okay, and so what did you do before this? I mean, so you, you said earlier you went to, to college and university and yeah, you've yeah. done I zoology. Yes, yeah, studied zoology for four years. I've been uh, to Madagascar and Vietnam with the Natural History Museum, discovering new species of cockroach and insect and spider and all that sort of thing. Um, but that was voluntary. I've been the manager of a jewellery shop. I worked in a curiosity shop in London, but... This is my true passion. I work for myself and I get to do what I love every day. And just to get this uh, straight for the viewers back home, you, you do like animals alive as well. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm a, yeah. That's, that, I mean, <laughs> you wasn't kicked out no. of the zoo. That's why you lost your job at the zoo, for, for killing no, the no, animals and bringing no, them here. Absolutely no? not, no. I'm a huge animal lover. That's why I wanted to study them, uh, study zoology. I've always had a family pet, a dog. We've got little Reg at the minute. So, uh, James, you're going to show us now one of your uh, favourite pieces and one of the most favourite pieces of the, the viewing public on your Instagram yes, yeah, profile. Yeah. And uh, can you explain what these two critters are? Well, you're almost bang on the money there. They're called crittens. So Ooh. these are the young of a crat. Now, people don't believe that they're real, but they're actually uh, incredibly rare uh, animals found in the Highlands of Scotland. Some have been found in Russia and Northern America. But um, they're basically a cat and crow hybrid. Mixed which, together. Yeah, mix, mixed together. So not a lot of know, is known about them. Like the Yeti, it's a bit of a cryptozoological species. But this is definitely a real animal, oh, yeah? This is a real... Yeah, real. So the, the male has got the cat's head so that it can fly off and predate. You know, it's got the big ferocious teeth for going and catching the prey and then it can fly and bring back to the female which stays at the nest and that has got the furry body to incubate the eggs so of the cat and yeah, the, the crow's yeah. head yeah 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 try explaining that to your biology teacher Absolutely, well i didn't yeah. think these were real but i mean it, it, this is amazing so this how long have these critters been known about for well they were first discovered in 1903 um just 20 miles near uh, inverness but uh, very rarely seen. I mean, not many, mu hardly any museums have got specimens. I'm one of the only museums that actually does. Uh, but I have been fortunate enough to be able to source other ones for um, customers of mine. So there's a gentleman up the road that has got a male. I sold a male and female pair to a model in Canada. And another male went to Japan. So, uh, yeah. Wow, these are extremely rare pieces. And I mean, I found some sights when I was in Glasgow on a weekend away with the lads, <laughs> but nothing quite as rare yeah. as that. Yeah, they're, I mean, um, they're, quite, they're quite nice specimens, actually. So tailless, sometimes they have a tail, sometimes not. Uh, and that's believed to be um, an attack from another yeah, predator. Feels real. If, if, it's, if it's missing its tail. Because obviously, this one can't fly away. So if... Um, a pine marting or something gets into the nest cavity, 
it will defend its eggs and young to the death. So normally it just show it its rear end, and then if the predator gets the tail, it's it's got a little something to eat. So then it will leave the rest of the the chicks and the the uh, female critter alone. Wow. And should should we hear the story about Mr. Koo as well? Yeah. Sure, I'm very, sure. we're very intrigued. I'm sure everyone wants to hear about Mr. Koo. So, Brad, I hear that you're scared of pigeons, and out of everything in here and in the shop, you want to talk about this the most. Yes, uh, there, I believe there's a story behind this one. Um, yeah. Well, his name I don't is quite Mr. like it, but no, no. I mean, it's a lovely specimen, but uh, his name is Mr. Koo, and he actually used to roost in the shutter of my shop. Uh, and when I first took on the shop. I would come outside and I found he was dead one day. Literally, I had to step over him to leave. I was like, oh, thank God, because, you know, he was pooing all over my windows and everything. Uh, but the next day, the foxes hadn't eaten him and he was still laying there recumbent on the pavement. And I thought, well, you've offered yourself to me, so I best have you mounted and he will live here forevermore now. And he's a firm favourite with um, my Instagram followers. But I love the fact that you've picked this pigeon to talk about when you've got uh, original antique domes that were rescued from a skip and in perfect condition, a leopard cub, a pair of elephant ears dating from 1890, a uh, genuine six-leg piglet, uh, my head made into a stag, a pair of the worst wolf heads you'll ever see in your life. They're called Bert and Ernie. Um, <laughs> a kappa Kaylee, a pangolin skeleton, I mean, even ratty and moly in a boat. I mean, and you picked a pigeon. I, I mean, <laughs> up to you, but like, there was a lot to talk about. What, what about this seal that we've got over there? We got the. That's a leopard seal. Um, they have got teeth that are trident shaped, so they can interlock in one another. Um, they mostly predate on penguins, so you can see by its teeth that would be good for ripping apart a penguin. But yeah. if penguins are a bit thin on the ground, they can take a mouthful of krill, close their teeth, and then because they interlock, they can expel the water and it w works like a sieve, so they'll just swallow down the mouthful of krill. But uh, this cabinet of birds, that dates to from about 1870 and is original, and I actually bought that off my old school. I used to queue up for science lessons, so that's something I would never sell. You've got Archimedes, the Hamidris baboon. You've got a cat that I'm working on. He'll be playing a fiddle. You've got a jackalope. Jackalope is a mythical creature found in North America and Germany. This is being posted off to Portugal this week. Um, yeah, I mean, I could literally talk all day about it because this long. is what I'm passionate about. Well, James, we're definitely going to be back here, Sabin, too, because I'm sure a lot of people are going to have a lot of questions after this goes out as to various parts of this shop. So we will definitely be back for a second part to this. And uh, with, with maybe whatever questions people have got online uh, for James, we can come back and do an interview Absolutely. with yourselves. Yeah? Pleasure, That's yeah. if you're open. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, make the appointment. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. And there we are. We're here in the, uh, the shop section of, uh, of the shop. Okay, so everything in this, this part of the shop is for sale. Um, so, I mean, what have you got? You've got a range of things. You've got uh, uh, foxes, zebras, uh, buffalo. You name it, there's, there's, I've probably got some part of something here. All legal, of course. Yes, I was going to say, so when it comes to importing um, the foreign goods, say like the, the zebra, um, how do you go about that? Is it a long process? or? It is, it is normally a long process, but because... It is so complicated. I just generally stick to buying things that are already in the UK. So I buy off of other collectors, other dealers, things that have been in the country for 20 years, 100 years. So there's everything in here, as you say, from I sell little key rings for £4 up to a hyena and zebra and things like that that run into the thousands. So um, everything for everyone. Okay, so uh, also, uh, James, um, how do we go about coming in the shop? Because you have some very, very funny opening hours. I've seen the sign outside. Yes. It, uh... Yeah, well, that sign is more or less accurate. It's not like you need to come to a taxidermy shop between nine and five. Uh, so 
and because I'm the only person that runs a shop, sources every single item, posts things off worldwide, emails, everything, the shop isn't always open. So it's best to make an appointment so you can just give me a call or email or text. Um, I post on my Instagram when the shop is open, so just follow me on there, at the taxidermist. Um, and, yeah. Okay, and also, uh, th that room we was in before, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to have, like, a, a dinner party or you know, uh, bring some friends over to have some drinks or some food. They can also rent that room out as well, can't they? They yeah, can come absolutely. down. Absolutely. It's so everything in this part of the shop is for sale. So you can take something home if you want a crow on your mantelpiece or a butterfly on your wall. Or but a squirrel tattooing another squirrel. Squirrel tattooing another squirrel. Loads of my customers are tattoo artists. So there's a few of those around the world that I've sold to various people. Um, but then. The back room, which is the museum, has got a dining table in the middle that can seat up to 12 people, and people come here and hire it for book clubs or drawing sessions, or you can get your own takeaway, and just people organise it for birthdays or just gatherings. Or the and South End TV Christmas South, party. South End TV yep. Christmas party, that's already been booked up. Um, but people leave it as a surprise so they book it when they come and visit and then they tell their friends right meet at this address at half past seven we're going to have some food and people arrive in the shop and go what the hell's going on and then i reveal the curtain and the chandeliers on and the tables laid and then they realise that they're having fish and chips in Cranfield's Curiosity Cabinet Museum. Well, I'll tell you what, James, I mean, my next, uh, the next girl I take out on a date, uh, I'm not going to mention any <laughs> names, I'm not going to mention any names. People might know her. Um, she works for South End TV. Oh. But uh, I might bring her to your shop as a surprise, OK? Oh, wow. Guys, you can follow James on Instagram. That's it. Uh, you, you have Facebook, I'll tell you, is it Facebook? Facebook? Cranfield's Curiosity Cabinet on Facebook. Website is being uh, worked on at the minute. Um, but Instagram and Facebook, you can f find all my contact details on there. Well, James, thanks for being such a lovely host. Um, and uh, I better thank the animals while I'm here as well. Thank you for having us, guys. I've been Brad here at South End TV. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.